Hey Hart fans, Butch Hartman here. Okay, we've done Danny Phantom 10 years later, Fairly Odd Parents 10 years later, but I've got another show out there, Tough Puppy. Let's do Tough Puppy 10 years later. Check it out. He's a tough puppy, tough puppy. He's a tough puppy. Okay, Tough Puppy was the third series I did on Nickelodeon, and man, did we have a blast doing that show. It was so funny. We loved the characters so much. The voice cast was phenomenal. I mean, Jerry Trainer as Dudley, Gray Delisle as Kitty, Darren Norris as the Chief, and Jeff Bennett as Ha Ha Keswick. Let's age these characters up 10 years. Let's see what's going on, okay? I'm very curious, because they're such stylized characters, it's kind of tricky to age up characters like that and still make them look like themselves, but let's give it a shot. Let's start with the Chief, Agent Puppy! Here we go. Okay, let's start off by drawing one of the iconic characters from Tough Puppy, Herbert Dombrowski, also known as the Chief of Tough. Uh, you know, he's two inches tall, he's gruff but lovable, he's, he's a leader, he's a nice guy, and he uh, just embodies really what a grizzled, rough, tough agent kind of would look like if he'd been through what the Chief has been through. I mean, think about it, he's trying to be tough, trying to be bossy, but then he ends up getting stepped on. So this is the Chief in his normal form. Let's see what he would look like 10 years later. Okay, now let's move on to the Chief 10 years later. This is just one version of what he might look like, and I figured, you know, let's just go full on Nick Fury from S.H.I.E.L.D. He's got the eye patch, the bandolier, with God knows what kind of armory or what kind of weapons are in those, you know, pouches around his body. Uh, he's got guns, of course. Of course, the guns shoot nothing but water because they're water guns. But still, he's a tough, grizzled guy. And I think 10 years later, I think things have kind of gotten to him. Like, he lost an eye. How do you do that? All right, let's do another version of the Chief 10 years later. Now, you know, the Chief rides around on this little sort of robotic scooter thing that he uses to project a larger image of himself. That's the Chief, you know, in the Tough series, in the Tough Puppy series. But now, I think 10 years later, he's just gone full-on robot body. I think the Chief somehow has had his body or his consciousness implanted into an actual robot because he's just tired of being small. He wants to be big, so now he's full-on robot. His face is projected onto a screen. He's got these, like, you know, six arms like an insect would have, and I think the arms and the robot body could do whatever he wants it to do. So I think the Chief gets more formidable as the years go by. I think at this point, 10 years later, the chief being the tough agent that he's been for the many, many years, he's been the leader of tough. I think just the many fights he's been through, getting stepped on, I think his body's just given up. I think he's got no body anymore. I think Keswick has invented a way to keep the chief's head alive in a jar full of fluid. And he's just a guy, he's just a head in a jar giving orders, but you probably can't hear him because the water muffles his voice. So this is the chief in a jar of water, only a head 10 years later. All right, so now for the full color version of the Chief 10 years later, I'm just taking just a little bit from each one of the drawings I just did. I mean, I'm gonna give him the guns, the overcoat, the full-on spy look, the scar on the face, the eye patch, and something I always wanted to give him in the cartoon, just a big fat stogie, like he always smokes cigars, but when doing kids television with animation, you really can't show characters smoking. I don't think you should anyway, but just for this one drawing, it's just kind of fun to show him with a cigar, a cigar chomping sort of a, you know, rough, tough agent who uh, wants to rid the world of bad guys. Oh and uh, go and uh, read a romance novel. So this is The Chief, 10 years later. Okay, that was The Chief. He's already old to start with, so aging him up was a lot of fun. All right, let's move on to the next character, one of my all-time favorites, Ka -ka -ka. Keswick. What was fun about Keswick, when I first designed him, I didn't really know what kind of animal he was, and so we kind of just kept that going through the show. Like, what kind of animal is he? Is he a prairie dog? Is he a groundhog? We actually did an episode like that where no one knew what he was. He had gills, he laid an egg, he had webbed feet. It was really fun. So here we go, drawing Keswick 10 years later. Okay, moving on to Keswick. He's uh, uh, really uh, uh, smart and very, uh, you know, uh, uh, well, uh, he just likes to invent things. And uh, this is just a normal version of Keswick, the version we all know from Tough Puppy. Uh, he's one of my favorite characters of all time because we don't really know what kind of animal he is. I mean, is he a dog? Is he a uh, skunk? Is he a, um, a fox? Is he a hamster? We just don't know. What do you guys think he is? Okay, let's move on to 10 years later now. So drawing Keswick 10 years later, I mean, I think, you know, maybe the years of being an agent have gotten to him. I mean, I think he's got kind of a buzz cut now, and, you know, he's got a giant weapon of some sort. He's like, of course he can invent anything, so I think he invented a weapon for himself. And maybe this weapon, like, just shoots, uh, I don't know, maybe it shoots happiness at people and makes them just a little bit less uh, angry. But gosh darn it, the fact that they're not happy makes me angry. And of course, uh, you know, we give him the gun, we give him the angry look in his face, 
face, and of course we have to add a, add a scar on his face because all all people who age ten years get scars on their faces somehow. And of course Keswick ten years later. I mean, who knows what would happen to him? I think you know, being a man of mystery like he is, being an international spy, being so smart. I think you know what? I think he just pocketed all of his money and just became a uh, maybe a supermodel. I think he just became kind of like uh, Derek Zoolander type of a supermodel, pursing his lips, you know, I, I walk the runway and I wear the f f fashionable clothes. So this is Keswick 10 years later as a high society fashion model. I don't know. What do you think? Okay, now moving on again, Keswick 10 years later. I mean, you know, just because he's an agent, it doesn't mean he has to be an agent all the time. I mean, the guy's got to have a family life. And I figure 10 years later, Keswick's probably gotten married and he's probably, you know, had a couple of kids by now, and I think maybe some of his hair is gone, and I think he's had two little Keswicks, and of course, uh, that's kind of an anomaly, because there can, well, he says uh, in the show, there can be only one, but I think since he's so smart, he probably found out a way to, you know, give himself two children, uh, with or maybe without a wife, maybe he grew them in a lab, I don't know, maybe there's a wife in there somewhere, you just never know, but this is Keswick as the doting f f father 10 years later. And finally, for the final color version of Keswick 10 years later, I think he's just become smarter and smarter over the years. His brain has just increased to a level beyond normal human society, even though there's no humans in the show, but you know what I mean. He's just advanced so far beyond all creatures on Earth that he's become, I think, just a herald for some intergalactic force that wants to devour planets. So I think Keswick has basically become the sa -sa -sa Silver Surfer, and he's just left Earth entirely using his intellect to scout planets for this celestial devouring entity. And you know, uh, maybe he'll come back and be nice to us. I don't know. Okay, that was Keswick, 10 years later. Now let's move on to Kitty Catswell. Now, Kitty's one of my favorite characters, voiced by the amazing Grey Delisle. I really love her because she's like the best agent in all of Tough, but then her life gets thrown into kind of a little bit of turmoil when Dudley Puppy comes on the scene and makes things just absolutely impossible for her. So if she were to work with Dudley Puppy for 10 more years, what would that be like? Let's see. Now we come to one of my favorite female cartoon characters I've ever drawn of all time, Miss Kitty Catswell. I just love the look of Kitty. I love her retro costume. I love like the cool gloves she wears, the jumpsuit with the collar, the turtleneck. I wasn't able to draw her legs in this drawing, uh, but I love the go-go boots she wears. Just her hairstyle, the 1965 hairstyle she wears. She's very retro, very, uh, very mod, you know, but I love Kitty Catswell. She looks great, normal. Let's take a look at what she would look like 10 years later. For this version of Kitty 10 years later, I wanted to kind of give her maybe a bit of a, a Lara Croft kind of a feel. I give her a half shirt, some shorts, running shoes, and put her hair back in a ponytail. Of course, give her a couple of guns. She's Kitty Catswell. She does not mess around. And also, she's walking on a tightrope because hey, she's a cat. She can balance on anything, right? So this is a Kitty getting into a little more action as her life progressed into even more super cool spy adventures 10 years later. And now for this version of Kitty, I kind of wanted to give her that M feel, like the lady who runs James Bond's Secret Service Society, the British Intelligence Service. I thought it'd be kind of cool to give her like this really sleek kind of a dress. Still kind of keeping the kitty feel, the kitty costume. I just wanted her with sunglasses next to a control panel. I don't know what she's controlling with a control panel. She's probably permitting someone to do their job or she's dropping someone into a trap door or she's uh, shooting off a giant laser at the bad guy. But she definitely is in charge of something 10 years later. I added a couple of gray streaks in her hair to show her age, but this is a very cool, very intimidating picture of Kitty 10 years later. Okay, for this one, I just went all completely bleak. You know, Kitty 10 years later has been through a lot. I think, you know, Petropolis has become a little more post-apocalyptic. I think the bad guys are overrunning the town. I think giving her a Nick Fury look, you know, with the eye patch, cutting her hair short, giving her the trench coat, making her tail all torn up. She just can't clean herself like she used to. And giving her these combat boots, this really makes her look really kind of grizzled, really tough. You don't want to mess with this version of Kitty. Oh, and she's got a scar on her face 10 years later. Okay, this version of Kitty behind a desk. I just think, again, she would be running tough 10 years later, or she'd be running some other super secret spy agency. And I think in this version, she's sitting behind the desk at this really cool, intimidating chair, and she's handing secret agent gadgets to a brand new agent. I think she's uh, signing someone a brand new job because she's the one who gives the orders now. So she gives them a communicator, a badge, and a gun. And this version of Kitty is definitely large and in charge 10 years later. 
Okay, in this final version of Kitty Catswell, I just really liked the Lara Croft approach. The uh, adventurous girl who's out in the jungle, just kicking butt, uh, jumping from tree branch to tree branch. You know, I think it would really be very fitting for her as a cat to be able to jump from branch to branch, like in the jungle. I think, you know, nobody would want to mess with her. I think she has weapons. I think she kind of lurks in the trees silently, like Black Panther. And I think she just looks for treasure. She's a bounty hunter. She's like Indiana Jones. She goes where the fortune is. I think she's given up secret agenting all together and is just out to go get some adventure and some treasure. So this is Kitty Catswell, Lara Croft Tomb Raider version, 10 years later. Okay, we've done the Chief, we've done Keswick, we've done Kitty. Now it's time to draw the star of Tough Puppy, voiced by the amazing Jerry Trainer, Mr. Dudley Puppy himself. What would he be like 10 years later? Would he finally wear pants? Let's see. Okay, now on to the star of Tough Puppy, everybody's favorite crime-fighting dog, Dudley Puppy voiced by the amazing Jerry Trainer, of course. And I've always loved drawing this character ever since day one when I first sketched him in a sketchbook years ago. Just drawing this little white dog with like a, a five o'clock shadow and a black t-shirt, no pants. Of course, he doesn't wear any pants. And uh, the little ears that float above his head. I took off the five o'clock shadow once we started making the series, but this is just Dudley in his standard feel good, happy go lucky pose in his normal, you know, normal self. And let's see what he looks like 10 years later. All right, here's another version of Dudley 10 years later. I think he's gone now into the jungle. I think he just left society behind. He went from a dog with a shirt and no pants to a dog with pants and no shirt. And I think he just let his hair grow long. His anger has just gone crazy. And he uses a bone for a weapon. And Dudley's just, he's just had it. So he's even wearing combat boots. That's how grizzled this dude has gotten. So this is another version of Dudley Puppy. 10 years later. Okay, now Dudley Puppy 10 years later, what would happen to him? You know, I think like all the other characters here that fight crime for a living, I think Dudley Puppy is just a guy who has just been grizzled. I think he's just starting to wear a sleeveless shirt, you know, with a skull on it because all tough, angry guys wear skulls on their shirts. And of course he has a bone tattoo because he's a dog and you it's a law, you have to get a bone tattoo. And uh, he's even got hair in his arms. And I think he's even taken to wearing camouflage pants now because he's just had it. You know, maybe he's got scars all over his legs and I just think he's looking tougher than ever now. So this is Dudley Puppy, one version, 10 years later. And on this version of Dudley, I think, you know, instead of getting grizzled and hardened, I think he's actually refined his approach a bit. Like in the movie, The Kingsman, you know, like uh, they're very well dressed. They have very, very dapper, dapper haircuts, dapper suits, uh, really cool glasses, a briefcase, who knows what's in it, a boutonniere on his uh, lapel, who knows what that might fire, it might fire water might fire a laser beam who might fire comedy you never know so here's another version of dudley kind of dressed up and looking good like james bond or one of the kingsmen 10 years later all right in this version of dudley puppy 10 years later i think he's just given up secret agenting altogether i mean he could be undercover in this picture as a cowboy but to be honest with you i think uh, secret agenting just kind of got him down he just couldn't handle the hard hard knock life that it was watching all of his friends get hurt and having to beat up bad guys all the time and having to eat all that secret agent food i think he's just giving it up He's gone out west. He opened up a dude ranch or a dud ranch. Dudley, get it? And became, I just think he became a full on cowboy. So this is Dudley Puppy, yeehaw, cowboy man, 10 years later. And one more version of Dudley 10 years later. I think he has just gone a little bit too far now. He's just gave up the tough mobile and wants to ride a bike. He wants to put on a leather jacket, grow his hair long, look tough, look cool. Of course, wearing no pants, no boots. But still, this to me is Dudley Puppy just kind of getting out in the road, wanting to just fight bad guys on their turf. And uh, maybe he's going undercover as a biker or something like that in this picture. But this is definitely one version of Dudley. What he could be riding a bike. 10 years later. In the final version of Dudley, the biker picture really spoke to me. I just wanted to draw him on a bike. Just, I think it'd be cool to give him a, a tough bike, a tough cycle, a pup cycle, if you will. And I just think having him on a, on a bike constantly being chased like Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible or just, uh, just you know, he's a, he's gone rogue. He's got his own bike and he's just out there getting revenge on everybody who hurt his friends while he was working for tough. So, and of course he let his hair grow long and who knew, <laughs> who knew? It's blonde. Anyway, this is Dudley Puppy just shooting at somebody. Maybe he's like shooting at the dog catcher. Maybe that could be a new uh, villain, the dog catcher. Anyway, this is Dudley Puppy, full color, on a bike, going rogue with long blonde hair. 10 years later. Okay, Tough Puppy, 10 years later. Who was your favorite one aged up? Let me know down in the comment section. Who do you think would actually be doing well 10 years later? Would these people be, uh, or these animals, I should say, would they be doing well still 10 years later? I think it'd be kind of fun to see what they would look like and what they would do. Okay, on the big white board today, we're gonna draw one of Snap Trap's henchmen. Ollie, the possum, you know, hello, boss. Hello, well, he talks like this, he's very proper. Oh, stop it, Ollie, you need to calm down. That's what Snap Trap would say. But anyway, here we go, Ollie on the big white board. Don't forget, art gives you power. Use it wisely. 